And today we'll be doing rendering fire. And I want to share my process and techniques to really make our flames shine bright. So, properties of fire. So to me, fire is very erratic and lively. So the last thing you'd want for your fire is for it to be like, like a basic shape. So unless you're doing like fire that's coming from a candle or any sort of thing, fire, fire wouldn't be this calm. You know, usually fire would be lively. So if I were to draw a basic flame like this one, but it wasn't coming from a candle, say it was from like a campfire or whatever. So you could see here, it's very lively. You know, I use lots of S's and lots of curves to really make our fire lively. And another note, this is a perfect time to mention it. Fire always goes up. So no matter what, Fire will always float upwards. It's just a characteristic of fire. So for example here, so say we have a torch, you know, that was upside down like this one. So even if it is upside down, the fire will still go upwards like this. So no matter what, the flames will always go upwards like this. And right now I'm just using, you know, really basic shapes. So we'll get to all the special effects to make it shiny later on. That's very important to remember because I do notice that for some students, they like to do it in uh, like it goes downwards somehow. I've seen it before. I'm trying to remember how they did it, but no matter what, it should always be like this or even like something like maybe say this is the torch or like a piece of firewood maybe. So it's tilted. It will always go up like that. And then I guess I'll give another example. You know, I will give a demo on how the shape shape of the fire is affected by what's burning i guess now that we have it started here and so now i'm gonna try to demo fire on this one and notice for me actually notice that i'm drawing fire two ways there's one where i draw it with solid color and then one where i rely on layer modes and so right here think of fire like i mentioned earlier it's very lively right it's very erratic so in this one it's kind of like climbing up. So what I've observed from fire is that, you know, like we mentioned earlier, it always goes up. It always tries to. And so now I'm going to do it on the corners here. So I'm going to put this, this cube on fire there. <laughs> it's just a trait that I've noticed. And as you get to the tips of the fire, it actually fades, you know? So that's why the middle part of the fire is always the brightest. All right, here's another tip. So I mentioned that fire, it fades at the tip, right? So you could grab an airbrush or some sort of like soft brush and you can sort of soften up the tips right here. And then I'm going to grab a hard eraser. So try to balance your hard and soft edges. This is just a general tip for any drawing. Because look, if it was completely soft, you know, it's fine. You know, it serves its purpose. But adding like hard, hard lines, it just, uh, it gives it more definition. So now I'm going to add like the, the fires splitting off right here. So this is why I like to work with soft first and then add the hard edges after. It just has a nice finish to it. Then right here. So the little fire that splits off right, right here. What I like to do is I overextend the fire and then I sort of trim it like that with an eraser. And then I try to make it look more organic and not look like it was, uh, cut you know so add some shapes to it like that it's starting to take shape here and like i mentioned earlier you know it fades at the tip so i will try to soften the tips a little bit right here just like that yeah and this is what it looks like when you rely on layers too much so i will show the other version of uh, actually painting in your fire so this is not necessarily wrong or the objectively right way but this is one of the ways and you don't really need a, uh, what's it called? A fancy brush. All you really need is an airbrush and a hard brush. You can help support us to make free arts education. Become a member on Patreon or YouTube and get special perks like critiques and classes. And now I'm going to do a contrast with a circular shape. And notice when I started off, right? I'm hugging the shape because fire, it tends to cling to like the shape of what it's, uh, what's on fire, you know? Or maybe on this one, actually, I'll show you the different method right here so this time around uh let's see before i continue and so i'll show a different example so right here i'm just gonna draw it manually you know it's not it's not really relying on the the layer modes yet but like right here 
and then I'll add the yellow myself. And so the reason why yellow tends to be the middle part of fire is because the middle part, like we mentioned, is the brightest, right? And on the color wheel, if you look here, red is right down here. And then if we want to go brighter, we go to yellow. And so that's why it tends to look yellowish in the middle right here. So this method, it takes a lot more work for sure, but it has a lot more control. And personally, this is how I would do it. If uh, I was doing like a real, real project like that. And then I'll fade the tips a little right here. And then fade, I'm gonna soften it up a little like there. Then I should add the little, I don't know what to call them. I call them splinters, but. <laughs> And then after this, after I've painted it, say I'm like done with it, I'm happy with it, I make a glow dodge layer or an add glow layer. And then I do the fire sparkle. Or it's not sparkle, glow, I should say. Just like that. Right there. So this is another way of doing it. And then I erase the tips a little bit because I don't want it to radiate like that. And after adding that, I see you just like that. And those are the two ways I like to do fire, you know, just wanted to share them with you. And the, there's not necessarily a right or wrong way. It's just more what works for you, you know, what works for what you you're trying to do. Because if you rely on layers like this one, you know, it's fast and easy, but less control. But then painted a bit slow, but more control. And last but not least, actually, for properties at least. So sometimes you might notice that there are embers like flying around. So maybe sometimes you would see little lights like dancing around the fire. So that actually comes from the thing that's burning. So for example, if you were burning a piece of firewood, it's turning to ash. And all that ash is being blown into the air while it's still on fire. And that's what makes the ember effect. So if the something that's burning, you know, is slowly turning into dust, then it would have embers like this one. But if it was, say, a flamethrower, you know, it's coming from, like, gas, it wouldn't have embers like this one. So it's a minor touch that really tells a lot about what kind of fire it is. Join a virtual art class to learn live from our professional artists. Get creative assignments, individual guidance, and real-time feedback on your artwork. Start today and level up your practice. If you learned something new, please like and share this video with a fellow art nerd. If you love receiving quality and free arts education, subscribe. Here's a couple other videos you could check out next.